Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be doing the ultimate experiment where we're going to try to squeeze in as many Earth-like objects into the habitable zone of our solar system as we possibly can. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So, our job today is not simple. We're going to take Earth and we're going to multiply it many, many times and try to squeeze in as many of them as possible in between uh, basically this part and this part. This is the so-called habitable zone where we expect things to have, uh, or not things, but planets to have liquid water. And the, uh, the actual zone extends a little bit farther, but uh, the so-called conservative habitable zone is from 0.99 to about... Uh, 1.64-ish. Uh, actually, let's check. The more conservative value is actually right here, 0 0.99 to 1.68, and the less conservative value is right here. So we're going to go with this. We're going to try to place as many Earths in here as we can, and we're going to use Universe Sandbox to do that. But we're also going to do a bit of math to try to basically calculate how many Earths can we actually place for this system to survive for at least like a billion years. Uh, basically, we're trying to create a stable system, not just squeeze Earth randomly. We're going to create a stable system where Earth is basically going to uh, be in in a position in, or in orbit around the sun uh, with other Earths. And we're going to make this the most stable possible system using previous examples from previous videos. So, first of all, let's create a new system. In one of the previous videos, I've actually taken a look at this paper uh, right here from University of Toronto. The stability of tidally packed, evenly spaced systems of Earth mass planets orbiting a sun-like star. According to the paper, if you actually look at the conclusion here, it is at the distance of 8.5 um, spheres, And spheres is a concept I've discussed in the previous video, so if you haven't watched this, you may want to check out what it is because... Uh, I explained it in there, but basically it's a, it's a distance where you can have moons and 8.5 hill spheres is the dist distance between Earths where you'll have a stable system. In other words, if I were to take a bunch of Earths and space them at a distance of 8.5 hill spheres, they would be in a stable orbit around one another. And the first such orbit would occur at 0.99 astronomical units away from the Sun. So here, if I were to take... Um, basically a bunch of Earths and place them at a distance of 8.5 hill spheres, they would be orbiting just fine without breaking anyone's orbit. The number of Earths we can potentially place in this particular region is 73. We can actually place 73 Earths at a distance of about 0.99 astronomical units. That's actually a lot. It is a little bit uh, unrealistic in a sense, but this will be stable for about a billion years. Now, we're going to basically then uh, place these Earths um, in such a way that they're going to stack their orbits. Well, let me show you what I mean. First of all, let's create the first layer here by adding an orderly ring of planets around our sun at a distance of 0.99 astronomical units. And here we go. So they're all going to be called the moon because that's how the game does it. And they're all going to be orbiting around the sun. Now, this is the first layer. We're going to create quite a lot of them, actually. As a matter of fact, um, if you do the math, uh, the, you can potentially place seven of these. And we're going to be placing seven of these at a distance of, once again, 8.5 hill spheres away from each other. So the second layer is going to be somewhere right here. And it's going to be, uh, let's actually see um, how far away and how many of the, of the Earths we can place there. So using the hill sphere calculator I've used previously, we're going to place um, Earth here, mass of Earth 1, mass of Sun 1, and at the distance of, uh, it, I think it's approximately 1.076 astronomical units, um, you get the value of hill sphere to be, well, actually very close to what it used to be, 0.0107. It used to be just a little bit lower. It's actually, it was closer to 0.1. Now it's closer to 0.76. Suggesting that the distance between uh, Earths now has to be 0.09 um, astronomical units. It increased just a little bit. And this also suggests that you can place 74 Earths in this particular region. So there's one extra Earth in the next layer. So here we go. 
The next layer is going to be added right next to the first layer. So there's now 70 Earth, uh, 74 Earths in the next layer. There's going to be five more, and it's actually going to be um, possibly a little bit long if I try to explain every single one of them. So we're going to just focus on the number of Earths and the distance from the sun. So layer number three is going to be also 74 Earths at a distance of 1.18 astronomical units away from the sun. This is layer number three. Uh, there's actually just a little bit of an increase uh, in terms of the number of the moons, so I actually rounded it to basically 74. The layer number four, layer four, also 74 Earths and also 1.29 astronomical units. We have possibly three more layers to go here. Let's go with the layer number five. 74 Earths at a distance of 1.397 astronomical units. That's uh, the next layer. And uh, we're going to go into layer six and the layer seven. The distance is 1.52 astronomical units, and we once again have 74 more objects to add. And lastly, I think this is going to be the last layer because we're about to reach that limit of 1.6869 astronomical units. So this is basically dividing 10.36, uh, 37 astronomical units of circumference by approximately, uh, where's the other value? by about 0.14 astronomical units of minimum separation between planets. So here we're going to divide these two and oops, wrong number uh, and get approximately 74 once again. So interestingly, um, except for the closer planets where it was 73, all of the further um, orbits require 74 Earths to be stable, which is something that I didn't really expect, but it's easier to calculate that way. So uh, here we go. We're going to add one last um, uh, level here at a distance of 1.65 astronomical units. And this is kind of what our weird and possibly not yet complete system looks like. So this theoretically, using the papers that we've discussed in previous videos and to, in some sense in this video as well, should be really, really stable. Now, I need to actually enable something here before I start the simulation. I have to go into Tools and enable Auto Orbits. Uh, oh, and by the way, I, before I do anything else, I have to change back my sun back to the sun size. Right now, it's much smaller. Uh, so now, if I go in here and do Auto Orbits, they should technically all orbit. Now, before we start this, and before we start the simulation, it's already kind of slow, actually. I'm barely getting like 20 frames per second right now. Um, let's calculate how many we have in total here. And by the way, this is actually still version one of the system. I'm going to do version two in the next video. So in version one of this video, we have one, two, three, four, five, six layers with 74 planets and one inner layer with 73 planets, which gives us a total of 517 Earths in basically the same solar system. That, that is an insane amount, insane amount. This is crazy. This is just insane. Uh, all right, so let's see if it actually lasts at all. Uh, well, first of all, I don't even think my game will be actually be able to handle this many Earths, or in this case, moons in, in, in the same sort of region of space, but we're gonna run it anyway. So I started the simulation, it's currently running at hours per second, and it's already ridiculously slow. Now, adding any more is going to basically possibly just overheat my computer to the point where it's not going to be function very well. Um, let's look at the orbits. This is a much better representation here. So we have seven rings and we're looking for stability here. I'm going to run this maybe a little bit faster just so we can see if everything is orbiting as it should. And if anything starts wobbling too much, you know that it's not stable. You know that things will start flying away. But as of now, as of basically a few days, Earths are doing just fine. I keep calling them Earths, but they're really just the moons that represent Earth. Uh, so, okay, my simulation just warned me that this is not doing, uh, this is not going well for me in terms of speed. Please slow down. So if I actually start accelerating more, it will start making errors and then things will start flying apart. But right now, you can kind of see that all of the orbits look really basically perfect. Nothing is wobbling, nothing is flying away, nothing is sort of influencing each other. And this is basically 517 planets in the same uh, habitable zone of the same star, the Sun. Now, so far, this is basically the highest number I was able to achieve without really destroying anything. 
And theoretically speaking, or I guess mathematically speaking, this will be good for at least um, a billion years. That's what the paper said. Possibly, maybe even longer. There was a sort of a 3% chance that this might even survive like 10 billion years. So let's uh, just for fun take a look at one individual planet, one individual Earth. In this case, it's the moon, but it's really Earth. The closest one so there's basically a kind of a layering system here you get the closest uh, planets that are probably more tropical than other planets and then the further planets are a little bit more cooler uh in a sense so if we were to be able to engineer this one day this would be a pretty interesting way of doing it we do need to have 517 masses of earth though which means that we might have to combine uh saturn and jupiter and turn them into this massive uh mesh of things and then essentially uh get rid of any extra stuff so this is one mass of earth i'm gonna go ahead and basically give it a little bit of like atmosphere and stuff make it a little bit more earth-like as well we're gonna give it uh maybe some uh more silicates just a little bit of water and uh i guess in some sense here we go this is a somewhat terraformed moon looking object Technically, this is supposed to be Earth, but right now, Universe Sandbox is unable to generate automatic uh, Earths. It can only do moons. But look at that. There's like 517 of these beautiful babies in the system. Now, so far, this is my personal record. Um, but I have an idea that I'm going to explore in the next video where we're going to be making this a little bit higher. So let's see what, how it goes. Right now, 517 is what I was able to achieve. Can you possibly do higher? And if you did, tell us in the comments below how you did it. But basically, this theoretically is the most stable formation of habitable Earth-like objects in the same solar system. All right, hopefully you learned something from this video and you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye. And because it took me so long to make the system, I need to actually go ahead and save it because this is going to be a hell to make. It literally took me a few hours to combine all of these things and do all the math behind it. But uh, right now, hopefully it's going to be stable enough for the next few billion years and I can come back to it and try to improve this a little bit more.